Would you host it? I would co-host it with you. Let's put our hat in the ring. We work cheap. You can tell by the set. I think you do. Don't get paid much, do you? No, you don't get paid to host Saturday Night Live. You actually have to write Lorna a check. Oh, uh, that'll be thirteen hundred dollars. I take big uh, coins. Thank you, thank you, Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> do you have to say my name? <laughs> I'm going to start with a joke just for fun. Okay, let's do this. Is just, this kills ha- really hard, and it's a little politically incorrect in my act. Perfect. This is Barack Obama giving a little talk to a fourth graders <clears throat> and teach them lessons. He uses nursery rhymes. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack looked at Jill, and Jill looked at Jack. And Jill said, I'd like to be a Jack, too. <laughs> So Jack and Jack came down the hill. It's a teachable moment. Michelle, yeah. Michelle, Michelle. There we go. It's a pretty good joke. It's a little it's edgy. Good. These two progressives it's loved little, it. It's too progressive. <laughs> oh, yeah. We have everyone represented. We're there. not Republicans or Democrats. We're regressives. That's our new name. We're, We're regressives. Yeah, we can't understand the news. We don't know what's going on. This is David reading like uh, Wall Street Journal online. What is it? What's going well, on? I don't huh? understand. Too many big words. Put it in That's real. my best impression. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like, is that me? <laughs> I guess. The idea was right. That is what I do. Let's I'm not treat a genius. Uh, but tell him about the a, new studio. A secret genius, he says. Well, we should say that we're in a different location. Yeah. And um, normally we're spread around North mm-hmm. America. Sometimes I'm in Winnipeg. You never know. But today we're at a literal bunker somewhere. Undisclosed. In Southern California. Yeah. And um, spent a couple shekels deeped into the coin purse. Yeah. And the uh, company that does the podcast is technically bankrupt. They're in chapter 11,000. <laughs> they're bankrupt, <laughs> but they're generous. And they passed the hat around the office. And so we got these for $39. At the dollar store. <laughs> so let's, let me see. So Dana, we're in the studio. Where's our camera? I don't even know. There's I'm 17. I think this one's mine. What, what one should we look at? It was just me and David talking to our audience. That one in the middle? Below the frame? All no. right. Is folks, that is that the wide shot? And that's me. Folks. Folks, come on. I like this one better. <laughs> come on. We could look over here. I look over there. This is all the cameras. All right. Before I get into... Uh, my bre- Oh, I'll tell you about my breakfast first. All right. Here we are. We're starting. Take five. Hey, David, um, how was your breakfast over the weekend? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> I So I got ambushed at breakfast, and this happens sometimes mm-hmm. to everybody. I sit yes. in the back of the restaurant facing the wall, and I'm reading the paper and physically eating. So a guy comes around. He goes, hey, um, I don't want to bug you. Fine. Bug me. But that, that, that's what everyone starts with. They don't really mean to, but that's just... I hate. I and hate to bother you. It kills me. <laughs> Nothing I hate worse than bothering you. I go, it seems like it's going <laughs> easily for you so the far. The thing I hate most is bothering you. Yeah. Well, it seems like you're doing something you hate. And like, I know John you're Lovitz. eating, and I'm literally eating like four cup. Not like I'm sitting. I'm literally eating, and I go, uh? And he goes, if I could give you a pitch for... Th- is there any way I can pitch you a movie for 30 seconds? It's about a guy... Now, that was sort of rhetorical. He kind of ran over my right. yes or no. Yeah, he's he's ahead of you. You know what I mean? He goes, yeah, he's all he's all amped he's up. He's one so, step ahead of you. So I so I sit there with my fork and uh and then he this is how he starts it then. Listen, by the way, <laughs> I'm a good guy. I'm also a Leo. I happen to know you're a Leo. We're both Leos, so we're on pretty solid ground right now. And you still have your fork up here with Yeah, food and I'm on like it. this going, it's getting you're fro- weaker. You're frozen, you got your arm. Because I have weak traps and clavicles, and I'm like yeah. this. Yeah, so you're li- you're literally in pain going like this, listening to this. Egg freak. heavy, <laughs> has chopped pepper on it, heavier. Egg <laughs> heavy, cannot listen to idiot anymore. Can't figure out how long this will be going. It won't be 30 seconds for sure. So Go ahead. <laughs> So then he goes, so we're both Leos. I know that because I, I know. Mm-hmm. They're, and the, so I'm they're a, the lions. I'm a great guy. And then he starts. Now, as he's as he's blistering, you know, he's like, wah, 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 um, pontificating to this stupid mm-hmm. fucking bloviating is the word I'm looking for. All I can think of is this is how you start your foundation on a professional career with someone right. in acting. Yeah. Not I'm a great producer. Not I've done this in this movie. Not I'm a great writer. It's mm-hmm. we're both Leos. That's your foundation. And by the way, all I could think of was, I'm not a Leo. And so 
I go, we're already fucked. Everything else doesn't matter now. I'm not, and I'm a cancer and I'm getting crabby because and you're I go, cancer. what are we doing now? I'm, this was your main credit is that you're a Leo. No other credits were mentioned. And then at the end, I'm thinking, what if we're on a set? Do I want a good script writer or do I want a guy shutting down the set because Jupiter's in purple haze? <laughs> Astrology. Do I want an astrologist on the set? Or do I want someone that's good at their so job? What, 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 what happens? Do you beat them up? Well, the thing is, you know this data that when we're, ever since yeah. SNL days, you can't read an idea for a script. You can't hear mm -hmm. an idea for mm -hmm. a movie. Because if you ever down the line do something like that, you will. You could be sued. Because they go, oh, that was mine. Yeah, you take it six years later. I had a rabbit in my script. Yeah. And then you're, you're handcuffed and taken away. Right. I... Oh, oh, we're going to fix here? on Dana. What's going on? Not, don't go too tight. Yeah, let's this pull is, back. This How about is, Cleveland? Uh, Evan, the tight shot guy. He likes to crank down on guys who remember Kennedy versus Nixon. All right. This thing's going to look like the Zapruder film. It's so blurry. But, you know, this, the low social IQ of that guy, because I was once in the early days, mm -hmm. I saw Bob Dylan on the streets of Manhattan. And uh, I'm thinking I should go over there and, you know, talk. To I Bob should. Dylan, you know? <laughs> That's and then I thought, thought don't, you know, he's just Bob Dylan. You know, he doesn't look like he wants to be bothered. So I just went up there. Excuse me, Miss, uh, Mr. Dylan. I, I'm your biggest fan. Yes. How are you? I don't think you're really my biggest fan. I go, why do you sound like Norm MacDonald? <laughs> <laughs> and that was the weirdest thing. Years later, I met Norm. And he's like talking like that. I go, you sound like yeah. Bob Dylan. <laughs> I guess we can cut that. No, we're okay. No, I like that one. No, I can't. I was. I actually did run into Springsteen at one point, jogging in the park. Like, boom! Hey, watch out where you're going. I got my good cowboy boots on. I'm gonna run around the reservoir. He's running in get his him. cowboy boots. Yeah, get him. Because <laughs> I'm Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. I grew up in New Jersey, but I know a cow when I see one. Can you do anything about that under bite? Why would I? It's my signature. Does your jaw hurt all the fucking time? Wearing a bite plate 24-7. <laughs> Not doing right. shit. Why are we shitting on him? I know, I like Let's get to these Oscars. Yeah, what are we Let's doing? Let's get to these self-congratulatory dandies. Who cares about the next movie I'm shooting with Leo Guy? Uh, Wait a minute. When... You're shooting a movie with Theo Vaughn? No, the guy at the fucking <laughs> Leo that said he's Leo. Oh, the Leo, the Theo, the, the wheel. I can't keep track of the stories. Leo Vaughn. So mm. the Oscars were last night. Highlights for me. Oscars were not last night. Oscars were the other night. <laughs> Oscars were six months ago, but <laughs> we we needed to contemplate. Yeah, I we so, need to contemplate. So I liked um, Ryan Gosling, Ken Song. I thought he was funny. Yes, I thought that was good. I like. There liked was a go ahead. Spielberg getting laughs with cutaways. And that was he, funny, right? Yeah, that was good. Yep, that's it. There's a. <laughs> There's a meme out now that apparently Putin watched the some of the Oscars and oh. he he went nuts for I am Ken. And no, he, he did. He's literally kind of giggling in the. It's on. It's an Instagram or something. Mm -hmm. I really was laughing at Ryan Gosling. He keeps singing I am Ken. What does it mean? We know his name is Ken. It's so funny. <laughs> It went on for a long time. <laughs> but it was pretty funny. This message was brought to you by Vladimir Putin. I love fly on the wall. Bloop. Bloop. Ending. <laughs> he I, said, uh, uh, she she fly like, in his waltzes. He brought Barbie into it when he went to the crowd. Barbie. Barbie. You know, they always say who wore it best. You know, the women yeah. come out and God bless them all. I don't judge. Bless Look at me. Them. Who wore it best? Last night it should have said, who wore it least? These are the skimpiest <laughs> outfits I've ever all? seen. Bra, they put on bra, panty, sheer thing over and walk around. I mean, what the, what's going on, women in the audience? <laughs> hey, peanut gallery. <laughs> Chris? We've run out Heather. of reviews. <laughs> I'm not so aware. Did you think it was uh, especially sort of less clothes on the red carpet or no? Well, it's, in, it's a trending thing right now where you wear see-through like lace mm -hmm. number with underwear underneath it uh, yeah and so why do you think it is trending i like the trends <laughs> <laughs> uh that i don't know maybe well it's young people and not with wearing perfect bras bodies. that's another thing too mm. have you noticed yeah i walked up mm -hmm. behind one of those young ladies anita and she had a 100 percent see-through with uh basically just 
a underpants. <laughs> and um, I didn't know that was her. I didn't know who she was. But the front was fully see-through, so I didn't even look. But I saw a picture today. And I thought, hmm. But, you know, I did see, I went out after and I went by a party and I saw, hmm. I would say the girls, the women all look gorgeous. I noticed that. And I wouldn't say there's plastic surgery. I would say that with makeup and slick back hair and things, I, there was a lot. I didn't know who they were at first glance. I'd have to, someone mm -hmm. said, that's blah, blah. And I go, oh, I even saw Kim K when I was going to get my drink and I said hi. And then I was like, oh, okay, that's her. Because. I couldn't right off the bat tell everybody who they were. Not that they're, I'm saying again, not that they're like plastic. It's just, they look different. They make their makeup different and it right. takes you a second. There's, everyone looked great. Though. There's Everyone looked great. Oh, I yeah. think having Al Pacino, you have an 83 year old man <laughs> who's going to announce the last award and there's an open bar. Uh, it's a shark going to water, cage going to water. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love Al Pacino. He just should have done the whole thing. If he had just said, if he had just picked up the envelope and screamed, say hello to my little friend, he would have brought down the house. Oh, my God. I Why doesn't he do that? If I was that? there, I would have said, Al, just say, say hello to my little friend. Did you know that he's dating a very young woman? I guess they had a baby. Uh -huh. And the courtship was him showing her his movie. So he showed her Scarface, and that's when she fell in love with him. Yeah. Shit, I would, too. That's a good, I would say Fresh, that. Sure yeah, I wouldn't open with that one. Oh, he's got Godfather, too. That's pretty good. Yeah. You can follow it. Uh, what else did I like? What I, about what about when Al Pacino comes on? And he goes, and now's the time. Oppenheimer. <laughs> Everyone goes, what's what's going on? <laughs> he, he jumped the gun a hair. Did you see that? He, I, I know. He said he says I'm I'm seeing Oppenheimer like it was a crystal ball. I'm seeing Oppenheimer. So we were like, was it is it a joke? What's going on? Uh, Paul McCartney did a little Instagram congratulating Oppenheimer. Uh, what did it go like? What was it like? <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean? You expect me to, what do you expect? Me? If you had you to know, imagine. What? Oppenheimer, you know, it's a great film. It's about a big bomb, you know. And they're up in the desert. They're like, how do we make it? Maybe put it here, put there. We don't know. Pretty soon, they thought, it could be a big one. It could be a big one. So they put it on a big wooden thing. And they're like 10 feet away. They said, we better get back. Could be even bigger. <laughs> and then they, they went dunga dunga, and this big old mushroom clown, but it's not full of mushrooms like the time your mom used to make mm. you. It's an atomic bomb. If I'm bombing in this room, I'm bombing out there. <laughs> that was all on one Instagram meme. It was one Instagram. <laughs> well, Putin, Putin and he were, you know, they were FaceTiming during the Oscars. But anyway. Well, <laughs> I will say that I didn't catch why 1, is, why is Evan on my shot for 20 minutes because he's, he's baffled <laughs> what he's are like, you trying to do take me back to 60 what should, where should I look at? he puts you back he's like 55 what 50, you want me here you 40. want me there or am I okay all right uh, well on a serious note what did you like about the Oscars well I didn't know all of it I didn't see all of it uh I just this is oh, our I did Oscar see edition. um I did run into Jace no Justin uh I saw Jason Bateman but J.J. Abrams uh, says, say hi to you. And, uh, and we're very good friends. Yes, he was very, I have celebrity friends. very nice. You know, without <laughs> it sounds like name dropping, but honestly, you go to those mm -hmm. parties and there's literally almost no plus one. So when you go in every person you turn to, you would know from something. So it's just a matter of I only mm -hmm. stayed an hour at one and an hour at the other because it was too much overload. It's like these, these, these. So. Uh, some mm -hmm. of the fun ones, I'm trying to think of what would be fun to tell. I, it was, there's not that many exciting things that happen other than, uh, you know, you have to walk in as a solo. This is really the point. When you don't have plus one, yeah. you have to latch. Are you talking about Vanity Fair? Vanity what? Fair is the first you, one. Oh, the big one. Yep. And then there was an after uh, party at Guy Who's Series. So I, an after party for me, God, that fucking time change helped me because that was, you got a free hour. It was a little earlier. Than it was in a real. You That's know what I'm funny. Saying? Yeah. Do you write that down on a notepad? You know, good time to go to parties. Oh my I god! It just know. fell into place. <laughs> it's like New Year's Eve. I'm, when am I going to stay up till that late? So mm -hmm. the first one, I stayed in only an hour, but I ran into Jason Bateman as the first person I saw. Now that's just a crapshoot. Who are you yeah. going to see right when you walk in? Uh -huh. um, and then there was a little a gaggle of dudes that came and just talked, and then uh, and then I saw. Oh, they said Sharon Stone was there. I went looking for her because she just did fly on the wall. Yo, no, and yeah, yeah. Up. SNS. When is Sharon Stone on? SNS is on. 
Mm-hmm. It'll be already on? Yeah. Oh, it's week after. Mm. Okay, she's coming up, and I wanted to say hi to her. Uh, but mostly, I saw some of the skimpy outfits, like they were saying, mm-hmm. and uh, and people would explain who that person was. And goddamn, anybody. Oh, I saw Robert Kraft, and I asked him about the big trade with Mac Jones, right? That's a sports story. Yeah. Uh, he runs the Patriots. So that was sort mm-hmm. of off the beaten path off the of beaten normal path people you see. Oh, uh, the second party. Well, you know what's funny is being at a party where everyone's um, pretty well known, and you walk by uh, Travis and Taylor, and how it's. <laughs> It's really there's an aura like there's well, a literal sound. It's the only place where people weren't flipping the fuck out. Did that happen? That did happen. They were at Guy of Series. Look at oh yeah, here's me and Taylor Swift when this is last. Did I night? tell you this? No, this is weeks ago. Um, now you look different. One but time you look great. I went to this uh, Grammy party, and they seat you wherever, and then they mm-hmm. and then she was sat next to me, and then she was more newer on the scene and she had done Ellen and Ellen said, go take <laughs> are, are pictures. Are the sunglasses throwing you off? Cause I have like glasses. Okay. He's quitting <laughs> camera work. He's just quitting and he's packing up. The, the, well, he, the camera is rebelling against wait, my fucking, face. The camera is just shutting itself off. Will not. The camera, AI said, camera I'm out. Fuck, I will not too, too old, too much stuff to think about. I am cutting myself you off. You literally took off your whole close up and started over. Yeah. He's starting over with a special lens smeared in mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to shoot it through a shower curtain. Do you know that I was invi- invited to the Vanity Fair party? Oh, there's another one. Oh, there they are. First ever to do duck lips. I'm saying it. I used to always do duck lips always. in SNL old days. I did, I did it because it was awkward, didn't know what to say. This is just- your hand on her back? I, I didn't mean to. I was just trying Dating. to take a, the picture. <laughs> but she was going around taking pictures, and I would say like, oh, that's like Dave Grohl. Go take a picture with her because she was newer. And mm-hmm. she was very nice. And she, that was like, mm-hmm. there was a whole table there, but you can only see us. But I was mm-hmm. uh, remembered, oh yeah, I did meet Taylor Swift in the old days. At that point, I remember you You told me you met her and she only knew one chord in the guitar. That's how young she was, but she got really good. Uh, that was a joke. You know what? I was invited to the Vanity Fair party 20 years in a row with mm-hmm. the white envelope, everything. And I never answered and I never went. And then I was down here once. I go, well, maybe I'll go this year. Right. No invite. Oh, the one time. This, I swear to God. 20 years in a row. Would you have gone when the Oscars were last week? When I went, <laughs> when I went to the Oscars oh, yeah, with, Mike you, with Mike Myers, yeah. invited me. We did Wayne's World. Yeah. Um, we're there with all the really cool people, Mike and stuff. You go, <laughs> you go to the Vanity Fair party. And my wife and I had to go, we, we don't have an invite. And they go, you don't? <laughs> no. And so I was going to go there and go, I don't really have an invite. I have some guy like, uh, sorry, you got to move, move along. You no, know? you should go. I mean, I think you could have gone last night, but uh, they also. As a plus one. People say like, oh, I'm. No, you could have gotten it if you would have just asked. Um, they mm-hmm. say, oh, I, w- I remember someone complaining. I was in this movie and I didn't even get invited to the Oscars and the, and the movie was nominated. But I have to say, it's so tight in that room. They, they have to have really just the stars and the producers and the director. Right. right. There's too many people in too many movies. Now, the, the parties would probably be a safer bet to get into. You know, um, it just turned into a blast. I mean, I, uh, last night was fun. Um, I didn't see I didn't talk to Kelsey, even though we did have Jason on. I could not walk up to them, even though they're just hanging out because it felt too thirsty. You could have. The only way you could have is that you just interviewed Jason. Yeah. And she could have go. Uh, he had some kind of weird things to say about you. We trimmed him. Just want to let you know he's got a couple yeah, younger what's up brother with you issues. Guys? Why do you hate each other? <laughs> and maybe I'm speaking. I mean, you know, my nightmare is your dream. Like for me to go and have three thousand small talk conversations. If it's an intimate party with like six people, but yeah. when it's just, what's up? How you doing? Working good. 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 Were you there? That's what I said. Yeah. David Spade, hey, you still doing you? that podcast with the church lady guy? Hey, yeah. good job. No, you guys we tried are kind it. of funny. I, <laughs> most of it's that, but if you find someone you know, then it's funnier. The, the yeah. second party, I was in the kitchen eating, shockingly, with four people. So that was just fun. Us that's, four laughing. Yeah. and That's perfect. And you know, the thing about like these two, like Travis and uh, whoever, everybody, Kelsey. anybody there is always hard to walk up to people that are already talking because people do it to me. 
you're in something and people just grab you and I feel it's rude. So unless someone's just floating by, it's hard to walk up and interrupt unless it's someone I really, really know well. You know what I mean? Well, I, yes, of course. Uh, I would, your social IQ is, you, you got it. Through the roof. You, you can feel the radar. <laughs> you can feel the radar. You're a stand-up. You can feel when the crowd is turning on you, which, yeah. no offense, but happens on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And you know how to, that was a joke. I know. I looked right at the camera. He kills. I just feel like well, if I went there, I would fake I was in a lot of movies. Oh, yeah. I was in Oppenheimer right before. I was the guy with the binoculars. Mm -hmm. Anatomy of Fall. You got it. I was the carpenter near the dumpster. <laughs> So you just say you're in movies and no one can really know. Barbie, I was driver number three in the yellow car, you know. Um, no, I you was saw a... me right behind Margot Robbie, right? When she was going into the bank. You can just say I was like <laughs> Barbie's first one night stand. I, my whole thing got cut, uh, but I shot for seven weeks. Mm -hmm. um, didn't test well. My sister had a Barbie doll and that got what passed, about, passed around by, what the, about bro when Jimmy says, by the brothers. <laughs> Jimmy said, oh, Barbie. Um, no one wants a Barbie doll anymore. Remember he said in his monologue? I was like, mm. Jimmy was, Jimmy was. Jimmy. He had a couple of cutting jokes. Though. He was, he was kind of edging out yeah, there. Yeah, I kind of, I like some of that. I think hopefully he's got at least 150 tucked and maybe he's two years out the door. He always says he's, he's doing gonna, just fine. Because I get it. Yeah, I always follow the money. Ryan Gosling, Gosling was so relaxed. He has 300 million net and he's a movie star for 20 years. Yeah, I'd be laying down. He, it felt like it was nothing to him, you know. Would you host it? I would co-host it with you. Let's put our hat in the ring. We work cheap. You can tell by the set. I think you do. Don't get paid much to do it anyway. No, you don't get paid to host Saturday Night Live. You actually have to write Lauren a check. Oh, uh, that'll be thirteen hundred dollars. I take Bitcoin. Oh, um, thank you, thank you, Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> do you have to say my name? Where my are you whole putting name? the check? <laughs> uh, okay, let's right, move on to. Awesome. And that oh, is our Oscar chunk. Well, I want to thank people for, on YouTube, I read all the comments, and oh, very positive about, about Superfly so far. And if they're mm. negative, easily blocked. But and, and so far, it's been very positive. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've never read a comment about anything. I get information yeah. from you because I'm too sensitive, and if I saw a negative comment, I would c crawl up in a ball and start sobbing. So I I do comments. get angry about I, I it. And people say it doesn't affect you, but it does. Uh, and so, oh, I did want to talk, we're going to do some headlines, but without being political, that state of the union was last week, right? Okay. Uh, no, I'm just, I'm saying we're not going to be political. Yes. State of the union. Yes. I did think it was funny that Joe Biden, the president, is that his name? Joe Biden, he, um, he just came out of that cannon. I mean, he popped out of the toaster. He was. I I just want whatever he was having because I get tired in the afternoon and jack me up, jacked and juiced and ready to go. Mm -hmm. I thought he'd be running around that chamber going parkour, parkour, just like bouncing off the wall. Well, you know what? I I don't know what they gave him or whether it was just a lot of rest and some protein. Maybe just some. But maybe uh, backstage OJ. there was an assistant going, uh, "Mr. President, uh, this is uh, this is for you." Oh, what is it? Uh, we call it a State of the Union. Oh, sure. I tell you, say a union before I do say a union. Oh, sir. Sure. They put it in a biscuit like a dog. And then three minutes later, and I was getting my ear trapped. <laughs> Fuck. Because normally. Fuck you all cut. They actually cut the State of the Union because he's like the old man on the lawn. He's still there. Fuck screaming. you. Yeah. They cut it, and then they, then I guess, uh, what's her name? Mary. Taylor Green. What's the girl? The um, one who was Marjorie? in the Indy 500 with the red. <laughs> yeah, she looked like NASCAR. She, she was my favorite. It, it's a freak show. The Republic's ending soon. So anyway, save your money. Or Bitcoin, I guess. At the beginning, on, no, on his regular speeches, they usually have come a uh, guy walk out and go, let's get ready to mumble. And then he comes out. <laughs> but on this one, he's like, he was all jacked up. He's like, and I'm also hornier than a three-peckered billy goat. My dick's harder than Chinese arithmetic. And everyone's like, okay, well, let's just stick to the cards. <laughs> where And he goes, I just got to say, I haven't hard. felt like this in a while. And I'm well, like, the... give me some. No, no, bust it out, break flight. Can I get another state of the union? Here you he's, go. He's microdosing. Was he he? What do you think? He's microdosing. What, what do we really think it was? I heard Ritalin is a alleged possibility. I don't know if it's Ritalin. Please send your letters elsewhere. But Ritalin would give someone a little pop, a little pop. Or really have a little Ritalin with a... Uh, a silverback monkey up with a twist, 
and yeah. uh, a little daiquiri no-no. <laughs> but the problem was the next day he was yelling, and it was very awkward. Oh, you know, still going? Yeah, he was at... <laughs> He was at a Baskin and Robbins ice cream store. I have a joke on fudge. Excuse me, sir. You don't have to yell. I don't yell. The State of the Union hasn't worn off. <laughs> and he's shadow boxing. He spits it Come out. on, Jake Paul. I'm next. I'll beat the hell out of you. Come on, Jack. I'll beat you and your whole family. I'll beat the <laughs> shit. I don't know. Look, it's a freak show. Let's just say it. We have an election coming up. He breaks a stir stick. You like that shit? More where that came from, <laughs> hustle. I'll cut a bitch, and that was to Jill. <laughs> he takes Jill's like show. Slow takes down. the broken uh, yeah. little wooden stick, and he said he'll cut a bitch with that. The stirrer. Yeah, I'll cut. I'll cut a bitch. Huh? You like that shit? <laughs> Let's get him backstage. Get him backstage. Did I do this before? Because it makes me. It made me happy when I found out you saw Nicolas Cage at the Oscars. Hey. That they lease Nicolas Cage. They pay him to come backstage when Biden gives a speech. And he's sort of like calms down. He's like an anxiety okay. person. Because when Biden's out there and, he, and the people are backstage, they go, he's going off script. He's going off the prompter. He's going off the prompter. <laughs> and then P Nicholas Cage knows at that moment to calm the staff down and goes, why, God, why? <laughs> and that has lowered the anxiety of the staff. It feels like it's working. Someone <laughs> said, did you hear this? I like he looks over there. What? Talk about, well, it was back on the Oscars, but. Aren't you stuck between Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga? <laughs> you told me there was a little like hand stuff going back and forth. With them. Oh yeah, well I had a view when they were doing the um, in the sky la 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 when they're singing the song. Shallows. Shallows in the shallows right. la 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 because of exactly where I was sitting, I could see right under the piano, and there was just just a little little some play some loose hands under there. Some loot in the shallow, uh, shallow, oh, uh, in the shallow. <laughs> Are this a few Oscars ago? This is this is twenty. <laughs> this is pre-pandemic, twenty eighteen. If you if you must know, it was during the movie um, Shallow. No, the movie they made. Star. Yeah, Born. a star. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no. Uh, no, what was the movie he just did? Bradley Cooper. He didn't, not, he didn't Maestro. Win, he didn't win shit. I didn't say because I say it wrong. I thought he was amazing in Maestro, but you know, what are you going to do? Uh, Paul Giamatti was extraordinary. He's a friend of the podcast. We you know, interviewed him. Paul, he okay, here's what I heard, and this is, was on something that Giamatti, who we had on here, mm -hmm. is wore, you would know this, the holdovers wore contacts to give him a lazy eye. And then Nicholas Cage goes, I would have done that. Yes. Is that something real? Yes. Yeah, you can wear a contact that just looks like a lazy eye. Just put your eyeball down here. It's like a just like wearing a Wow, well, I don't know if I could do that. That would weird me out so much. Look, you know, it's for their art. I go, that would weird me out. Meanwhile, I'll be getting full plastic surgery in a week. <laughs> that doesn't I, scare I me. I had a little eye Zzz. tuck over the weekend, hence the shades. I had a little eye tuck, so I just wear these for a couple of days. You, you know what I like now. is when you go up to people at the Vanity Fair party and they go, and the first compliment is do you sleep on your face? And I go, why? They go, you look like a pound puppy. I go, what's that? And they go, don't Google it. Anyway, how's <laughs> that? That was Lady Gaga. You know pound puppies are house tricks. So, Chris, why don't bags. you tell us what's going on? Oh yeah, well, is there? Everybody's face is different. Give us some trends. There's a and... lot of fillers, I think, going on and fat injections. Like Ryan Gosling, handsome, but there's something. Shut. Or he's gained weight. I don't. I don't think he has uh, gained weight, but there's a lot of. He goes. I gain a lot of my weight in my, in my cheeks. Face, exactly. Yeah, I've just. I got a six pack, but up around these cheeks, oh I got my a cheek God. belly. And if then, he's trying to be better looking, I give up. Go so ahead. they're either filling or they're taking fat out. Like um, it's called buccal fat removal. Have you heard about that? Wait, on the inside of your cheek? They go in into your mouth and remove. So that's you get hollow. So you so want a lot of women are doing that. Well, men are doing it too. So you get the like the that look. I went from horrified to booking appointment. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I would. I I would never do that. <laughs> do you think we can get no, like a double discount if we go in together? <laughs> Why don't we go in and try to literally look exactly like the same person? They go. I oh, did I tell you? I told you, Dana. I went to the airport in, in Santa Rosa, mm -hmm. and I and I was uh, where you did your special. And mm -hmm. it's a great gig. And did I already tell you this? And when I walked through, the guy was like staring off into space and I didn't take my shoes off. Did this remind you of a text? Everything okay? 
Oh, no, I was just, uh, uh, hold on, I'm just going to. Okay. Yeah. No, David's fine. I'll tell him his mom called. All right. Okay. That was my mom? Never that was my mind. mom calling to say you've told the story. <laughs> so I go through and the deputy dog guy's like this. He's not even looking at me. And he goes, all right, next. And, I, and it was the tiniest airport. He goes, take your shoes off. And I go, oh, I, I think I'm in TSA. I don't know. And he goes, well, uh, are you over the years? And I go. Am I what? And he goes, are you over the age of 75? And I said, <laughs> are you out of your fucking mind? You didn't just say that. And then everyone else said, because everyone else is nice to me. They get it. And this guy, I go, no, I'm not. And he goes, mm. <laughs> then you got to take them off. <laughs> are you fucking Take what off? My shoes. Just his shoes? I thought he was taking your underpants no, off. <laughs> no, he said, then take, he said, then take off that old mask. And I go, no, no, this is my face, but I'm not. He literally said, are you, oh, not under, are you over 75? Hey, I got carded. Get fucked. I got carded last week at Rite Aid buying a beer. I can't believe I told that story because it's sickening. Uh, I guess we'll show That's a few. Funny. Um, That's funny. Do you want to look, so, what are we going to look what? at? Some stories, headlines? That we better get to something. Yeah, we're fucking. We got a whole ass. Brown, I'd call him two days ago. Okay, we'll do a couple, then we'll do it because we don't. We already have a lot of shit, mm -hmm. and I do mean shit. What is this? Oh, this is so dumb. I thought this was cute. It's a it's a witch bee, Dana, and it has it carries sticks around. It looks like a they call it a witch. It looks like a broomstick. Isn't that cool? Well, I wee, 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 wee. he flies around. I, I'll take it, my pretty. Yeah. And then he goes, I'm oh, kidding. It's just a stick. I'll I just get fly you, around. My little yeah. pretty. And you little David Spade, too. I have um, a lot of bee bits. Oh, the beekeeper. I have a lot of bee bits. Oh, Jason I, straight into the bee beekeeper. Just a quick one. Oh, you, oh, you a witch bee. First of all, he has a lot on his mind. You have to do the setup. <laughs> We've got a lot of witch bees, but I'll be keeping them all. I don't discriminate. And it goes nowhere. All right, next. Oh, I'm Jason Strayman. Uh, I do like I, that. I think it's kind of cute, I think right? It's just cool. I don't In know. fucking cute news. All right, no, yeah. no rush. As the fucking bit is bombing a miserable mm -hmm. death. Jeez, we're bombing in our own room. What are we doing? Out what there? is this trend? I did this. My dumpster. magic toothbrush. Okay. Oh, girls! I saw this last night. I I complimented someone on their freckles, and they go, "Oh, it's makeup." I didn't even know people are putting fake freckles on as makeup. Well, they're tattooing. Freckles on their face too. They're doing that too. Oh, like full tattoos where they yeah. stay. Yeah. Lord love a duck. God, oh, I am over do, seventy. We could be doing so much more. You're seventy two. Don't worry. I about just it. don't know if freckles are that fucking great. I mean, I mm, like them, but not like we go back to me and Taylor Swift. That's the only thing. <laughs> do you have any freckles anywhere? I have freckles. Yeah. You have okay. a lot of tattoos, Heather. <laughs> How many, roughly? Fifty three. <laughs> okay. That was higher than I thought. Gosh, uh, 50, 53 tattoos. You heard her right. Revealed. Uh, mm. um, okay, let me see. This one I thought was interesting. What is this? A girl, Mooch Oblige is the funny headline. She started by holding a cardboard sign that says, I need a husband. And of course, she's, she's attractive, so guys would like apply. Didn't work, but she got some money out of it. So now... She just does stuff, fly me to Miami, buy me a purse. She hangs out in front of Tiffany's as an experiment. She says, hey, buy me a purse. Are you rich? And the guy immediately puffs up and goes, I do pretty good. <laughs> buy me a Chanel bag. And they fucking do. And so she's gotten videos of her. Guys just buy her hotel rooms, <laughs> Chanel bag. I mean, this is sort of an underground hybrid hooker uh, thing that's going on in LA anyway. But, and it's really rampant and it's not talked about. But we Is talk it called about the hybrid issues. hooker? <laughs> it's something it's not really but it's why didn't she just go on OnlyFans and make a billion in her bedroom this is probably easier because she says she says she doesn't hook up with anyone okay but um I feel like <laughs> she's just clowning dudes and they go along with it so there's really it's a victimless crime it's just embarrassing across the board I think. This is Larry Bubbles Brown, famous comedian. He's going to call you and you're going to go over a red, red, red that he wrote. Okay. Yeah. We go live. Here. Criminy. Everybody's Criminy. listening. Everybody's no. listening to you. This is Larry the Bubbles Brown, everybody. Yeah. Hey. How are Hello. you? 
Good, good. So you're on the air. <laughs> Criminy, uh, what is your question, sir? Well, Criminy is from Dennis Miller. Criminy, right? Carvey. Yes, yeah, so we either every time I talk with you, we either wind up talking like Dennis Miller or John Wayne. <laughs> Christ sakes, okay, coming is that in John on Wayne? cell phone heavy. This is John <laughs> Dennis. <laughs> well, we love John Wayne because he's never afraid, and we're so afraid of life, yeah. right? Yeah, so he's the opposite of us. Yeah, because there's a movie where he goes, take down the submarine, pappy. No, Duke, I can't take it down. We're all going to die. I said take her down. <laughs> I like. I miss those kind no of. No fear. <laughs> no fear. All right. Here's here's a few. He sounds red. better on the phone than we do in the real podcast. By the way. Well, uh, thank you, Tim Cook. Go ahead. This is Red Redneck. He says written by and also Chris, who our, our friend Chris Reels has one too. Red okay. Redneck has written by Larry Bowles Brown. I'll do the best I can, Larry. I'll do the no, okay. one at a time. I'm Red Redneck, the redneck comedian. My therapist said I was passive aggressive, so on the way out, I keyed a car. Come and get some. <laughs> on the way out. He laughs at it. <laughs> He's like, not He's bad writing. Here's a good one. I'm Red Rednecky, the redneck comedian. Took up golf, shot 67. Did much better on the second hole. Come and get some. <laughs> okay. David liked the golf. Red Redneck is all over the place. He's playing golf. Uh, a red Redneck. He's a red, from the red, 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 redneck comedian. Mama gave me a book on ADD. Couldn't finish it. Come on, get some. <laughs> I only got to the first D. I had a I addendum on that. This is Red Red Necky, the redneck comedian. Mama, me, <laughs> Mama gave me a book on ADD. Only read one page. Couldn't stop thinking about crawdad stew. Come on, get some. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I like that punch up. Much better. I'm Red Rednecky, the redneck comedian. Told mama I was going to donate my car to charity. She said, Rednecky, where are you going to sleep? Come and get some. <laughs> it should be red. Oh, he sleeps this. in the car. It shouldn't be red. I'm breaking down each joke and <laughs> clarifying. Okay. How about this one? I'm Red Rednecky, the redneck comedian. Met a recluse woman on Tinder. She gave me hermit crabs. Come and get some. Okay. Hermit crab. Uh, that's a little. That's a no. Little, it's a thinker, and you're not used to mm -hmm. thinking during red rednecky. Okay. Here's a non-thinker. Okay. I'm red rednecky, the redneck comedian. Told mama one day I'll have a trophy wife. She'll look like a moose. Come and get some. Because mo moose. moose. Yeah. Okay. All right. These are a little, little more. These are a little more thought out. So we're not yeah. ready exactly. I'm red rednecky, the redneck comedian. My last girlfriend was a treasure, so I buried her. Come and get some. Okay. <laughs> Good job. Are we still going? Oh, no. Now let's go. Here's Chris's joke. Chris okay. Reels wrote a red. Every, anyone, anyone could write. They're one. not reading them. You're reading Do you want to read it? Okay. You read it, Dan. Okay. I'm Red Red Necky, the redneck comedian. I took my mama to the grocery store. She picked up two ruts of potatoes. It said, these remind me of your daddy's balls. I said, they're that big? She said, no, just that dirty. Come and get some. Oh, oh Chris. <laughs> Chris. And they cost so 99 blue. cents. I know. Uh, okay, well, that's great. <laughs> uh, Chris is the best, yeah. Good was... job, Bubbles. <laughs> Good job, a, Bubbles. Do you have any joke that you're doing you want to do for us? You don't have to put you on the spot. Do one of your favorites, do one of your best jokes. Uh, one of my latest newer jokes is uh, I had to close out my account at the sperm bank. It was getting zero interest. <laughs> <laughs> I go. like it was getting oh. zero interest. <laughs> zero interest. And then Good your, delivery. your catch thing is womp. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's After funny. Every joke he does <laughs> that. And when Larry opens for you, the whole audience starts doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Felipe does it. I uh, I did that when I was going to eighth grade, I used to walk to school and there's like a uh, this bird, and every time I'd walk by the tree, just go meh like that. I, he sounded like Edward G. Robinson. So <laughs> I, I just started doing that forever now. I don't know why, but it seems to get laughs. <laughs> oh, it gets laughs all right. Yeah. I, have to, I have to tell the sound man, cut the mic, get him off, get him off. Cut, get get him, him the light. <laughs> yeah, if he kills, get rid of him. If Bobby Lee's killing, you get him off. Um, all right, Larry, well, we're going to go look at some impressions. Impressions. So We're closing out with impressions. We're already Larry Bubbles long. Brown, everybody. All right. We'll Good job. Talk soon. Thanks, easy, buddy. Greg. Everybody. Easy, okay. easy. Bye -bye. Let's, let him hang up the phone, and then the guy comes on. Go. Okay, this is the part we do impressions. We should ask for something next week. That's yeah. 
something else, but we'll, uh, we'll do them for now. Okay, so let's see. Here's one. We don't know what the impression is, but we're going to watch it and analyze. We like impressions. Send an impressions at superfly at odyssey.com. A U D. Okay. What's up, Spadoodle? Dana? Um, here's a character. He's called uh, Bitter Blind Guy. And he's mad at everything. Mm -hmm. Bitter Blind Guy is walking down the street, neighbors coming. Beautiful day, isn't it? How the fuck would I know? <laughs> then he folds up his key. Um, I'm actually blind, so that helps a little bit. Uh, oh, I like it better. Keller leaving a uh, burning building. So there's a fire, you know, alarms, sirens going off. People are leaving, and Helen's just. <gasps> I thought he's blind. I thought he's gonna yell, guys! It oh, smells like a fire. It, is he really blind? Before you annihilate him, go ahead. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> I think. Uh, I think so because he tried to disarm us by pretending he was blind. He goes, "But oh, I, I'm really blind." Yeah, I really. The am way too. he folded that stick was pretty smooth too, so he must have done it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we love him. That's awesome. I didn't get it. so he says, "I'm here's a blind guy walking by a fire." I thought the joke would be. It's clearly a fire. Then he smells and goes, that smoke. You guys, there's a fire. But everyone knows because it's they see it. He just put them blind that they would just walk into the fire? Was that the... It's they're just like, ah. This I is like our the news. first one when he got mad. Yeah. I understood it. Yeah. Okay, what's mm -hmm. next? Even though we're going Evan along. Galper. Hey, guys. Uh, thank you so much for everything is you've this done. A I, I love you both immensely. <laughs> Uh, thank you for the podcast and join me for a little theater of the mind as we head to the 17th floor of 30 Rockefeller Plaza in the early 1990s on a Wednesday morning for a conversation with Adam Sandler and Norm MacDonald. Okay. Hey, Norma, Lauren said he wanted me to come up with something for update and the, uh, the table reads in like an hour, but I got one idea. All right. All right, buddy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Show, show me what you got there. Okay, I think I'm going to come in as an old lady. And I'm going to be wearing a long wig and glasses. And I'm going to talk to the children like this. And then I'm going to start getting real crazy. And I'm going to lose my mind. And I'm going to lose the children and everybody. What do you think? I don't know what you think of that. Yeah, I, 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 see, uh, I see what you're doing there with the, uh, with the yelling and the wig and the old lady and stuff. Uh, I just don't think it's funny. Thank you. That's just a shtick. I know they love each other. I know they were both hilarious. Thank you for clarifying. Um, uh, that's just good. a shtick. Uh, yeah, go ahead. He was good. I mean, yeah. it was fine. I mean, Norm is sort of an easier one because it's Canadian, but I do like his ending where he didn't like. That's kind of, I didn't see that coming, where he didn't like Adam. Right. Or his sketch. Oh, I thought, I thought. Everyone does that. Right. Character. He kind of went Sam high, which is good. Where he, yeah, it, when he does those times, sometimes he goes high. That was a good ending. I think that's it, Dan. Any final thoughts? Are we okay? Nineteen minutes of extra uh, work. That's not like us. But thanks for watching. We won't make it any worse. Okay, bye guys. Bye bye. This has been a presentation of Odyssey. Superfly is executive produced by Dana Carvey and David Spade, Charlie Finan of Brillstein Entertainment. Jenna Weiss-Berman of Odyssey, Heather Santoro, and Greg Holtzman. Hope you liked it. Mm -hmm.